Today, on behalf of the Hillsboro Historical Foundation, I would like to welcome Charles Stanley. Charles grew up in Hillsboro in the, in the Mill Village out in West Hillsboro, and I'm sure he has lots of good stories to tell us today. So Charles, I'm going to let you begin where you would like to begin, and we will look forward to hearing your stories. Thank you, Kay. Uh, I really appreciate this. You know, I really didn't grow up in the Mill Village. I grew up across the railroad tracks from the Mill Village. Uh, but uh, my earliest memories are hearing Fadine Summy yell out across the, the village, Arthur! <laughs> so then I knew it was time to go home. Okay. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, uh, Dad worked at Bellevue Cotton Mill. Mom worked at the Eno plant of the Cone Mill. And uh, so I, 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 I had pretty much a, a feeling of, um, of closeness to, to that area. Um, earliest memories uh, were, um, see, Dad and Mom had both been married before, and I'm the only child from this marriage. Uh, but um, earliest memory would be uh, my half-brother Thomas coming home from service. Uh, and a, a, lot of, a lot of the early memories were built around World War II. Mm -hmm. We lived probably a couple hundred yards from the railroad track and to see my uh, sister Mary Lou uh, running down the bank there of the tracks waving at the troops as, they, as the troop mm -hmm. trains came through and all the tanks and the war machinery mm -hmm. that was, was going by there. Um, the, I grew up next to Eno United Methodist Church, Eno Methodist Church. That church faced the Mill Village. Now, interesting thing now over time, because you see, in the 50s, Cone Mills was faced with putting in um, bathrooms in those houses. So what happened was Cone sold each house to those people who were renting for I don't know how much a month, provided they would move them, that they'd pay to move them. So you look out your window and see a mill house going down the road. <laughs> uh, that happened ever so often until the village was gone. I don't know how many years it took for nature to reclaim that area, but you can go over there now and find the sidewalks. <laughs> You can walk down the steps from one level to the other. It reminds you somewhat of Inca, old ancient Aztec, mm. or Inca mm -hmm. ruins, because you knew what was there in the stories and the lives of people. Um, it was um, it was a very very interesting time. Mm -hmm. Did you go to school at uh, West Hillsboro Elementary? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, that um, you know it's an interesting thing you can that I can do. I can I can go on the precipice of the what we call the cliff the mountain overlooking the Eno and I can stand there and see the first 20 years of my life mm. I can see the where the school elementary school was that I attended I can see Betty Riley's store where Alton Williams and my dad would play checkers <laughs> I can see the church in which I was married uh, and the elementary school uh, West Hillsborough Elementary School. Um, oh, great, great early memories. Uh, first grade, for some reason, they gave us our shots. <laughs> and they lined us up in the office there to give. And I'll never forget the scream of this one girl when when they gave her a shot. Years later, later at a Hillsborough High School reunion. A bunch of us West Hillsboro people were sitting around and we're talking, and it was amazing how many others remembered that same girl screaming <laughs> that the impact that that had. That girl was June Carol Gregory, who became a nurse. She <laughs> married James Taylor. And, uh, and when she said that when it hurts her as much as it does uh, you when she gives you a shot, June is, uh, you know, just telling the truth, I think. But that's really, that's really a fact. 
what kind of recreational activities did you have when you were out there between the two villages? <laughs> uh, I think probably, Kay, uh, most of us grew up with our cap pistols. And, uh, of course, uh, getting back to the fact the early years based around the war, uh, how much was, I'm sure, that, uh, I mean, crawling down through the honeysuckle to uh, and, and have the imaginary tanks coming around mm -hmm. the corner at you at any time and sitting up in an apple tree and <laughs> dropping bombs on the Germans. Um, mm -hmm. You know, those were, uh, those, and, and I, I think that house that I grew up in, if you went out in that yard today, you would see the foxholes that I dug uh, <laughs> during, during that time that they were still there. <laughs> Um, you know, Google Earth is an interesting thing today that you can go over those places and look down. The smokehouse where my dad, when I would come home from school, one of the first things I had to do was to get the coal and bring it in for the coal stove. Uh, I can go over and Google Earth. That, that little smokehouse is still there. And where the basketball goal was that we put up on that thing to, to play. But... Uh, yeah, the cap pistols, the shooting around the corner of the church, and uh, you never kill somebody. You mm -hmm. shoot them in the arm, you know, mm -hmm. and and they would they would escape. But uh, mm -hmm. um, and of course, I guess the old hide and seek type type yeah. things. Uh, well, I wonder if you got some of your uh, battleground activity ideas from going to the theater at the <laughs> Hollywood or the Gym Theater, they called it. Yeah, we had there were, in Hillsboro there were two movie theaters, uh, the Gym in West Hillsboro. And the uh, Osborne was the one mm -hmm. uh, in town. Um, we we would t on a Saturday afternoon we would walk to the uh, the gym in, in West Hillsboro. Um, where that was set up, you had a grocery store, the post office there. Uh, there was a guy named Stinky Piles had a had a cafe. And there was a barber shop there somewhere, but uh, it cost nine cents to see the movie. Of course, you always had the serial uh, that began and it's continuing to the next week. Uh, remembering the thing from another world, James Arness's first movie. He played he played the thing, um, and watching it, uh, Gene Albright, my nephew, Gene was uh, watching it through the in the little space between the two seats. I, I remember him doing that. When you came out of the theater, we would sometimes go ahead and walk to town and see what was playing at the at the Osmond. <laughs> and when coming home after, you know, of course, coming out in the bright light on a Saturday out of the, out of the gym theater is always a big shock. You know, been in the mm -hmm. dark all that time. And then you walk to town, it was probably another mile. Mm -hmm. Uh, then after that, of course, you're coming home. You take the shortcut through the old slave cemetery mm -hmm. there. Um, of course, we were taking that shortcut because how long it had been since we'd been to a bathroom anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and so <laughs> trying to not be afraid mm -hmm. and also relieve yourself at the same time <laughs> was, uh, was a challenge. <laughs> and uh, I remember... Of course, it's good and dark then, and walking in, and along the side of the railroad track, it's very dark, no street lights out there where I could remember. And then hearing something in the bushes, and a big hissing sound in the bushes. Mm -hmm. And suddenly out jumps Pud Cole, you know. <laughs> and of course, we all laughed and mm -hmm. said, we knew it was you all along, mm -hmm. but we really didn't. <laughs> okay. I thought maybe you were going to tell me about a panther coming out of the panther den. Did you ever play up in that area on the mountain? Yeah, uh, uh, Kay, uh, that was, again, a Sunday, uh, uh, something we would do on the weekends. Um, I went there. I have a picture of my wife's grandmother on a Sunday afternoon at the panther's den. Um, of course, the story of the panther's den was that... Uh, a man was sitting there, and he looked up, and there was uh, this panther, this mountain lion. We like to think of it as the last one in the area that crouched and sprung at him, and he shot it in midair, and it fell in a lifeless heap right at his feet. Um, but it's still, it, it's still there. It's a little trickling spring that runs down uh, in front of it. But uh, 
the, how many times have we scampered down the side of that side of that mountain uh, to go there on a weekend? Mm -hmm. Imagine you played a little bit in the river down below it too, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I learned to swim at a place called Sandy Beach, and I have no idea why they called mm -hmm. it Sandy Beach because it was red mud <laughs> and had the, of course, had the rope swing that went over the over it. And that was very near the Coon Rock and. Uh, I can ask my grandson uh, what happened at the Coon Rock, and Lucas will say, uh, that's where Freck broke his neck, mm. Grandpa. Uh, Freck Dollar uh, dived into the uh, water there and uh, just sort of stuck up in it, and it broke his neck he, for a long time. He wore this uh, thing around his neck. Mm. Um, but uh, Coon yeah. Rock is out near Dimmock's Mill Road, is that right? Yeah, it's pretty much down below the old water plant there mm -hmm. right right down right down behind it so you oh. have uh, um, that there okay that's true so you learned to swim in the Eno River yeah in fact I remember my uh, sister saying that uh, she learned to swim there too it's one of those things where they just threw her out in the water <laughs> and said either swim <laughs> swim or don't and, yeah. uh, and she swam mm -hmm. do you remember that river icing over you know, I don't, I guess I remember more about it flooding. Mm. Um, I carried the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Which one? Uh, the Durham Morning Herald. I mean, there was another newspaper at the time, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, there was a Sun, a Durham, Durham Herald, and a, uh, an afternoon paper. That was paper. afternoon paper, yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I got lots of memories about, about that. But the first morning that I carried the newspaper, I had to carry it over to the Mountain Village, too, as well. And it had rained so hard that the water was out in the bottom, the river had overflowed. And the, seeing that water, seeing the reflection of the light off all that water, mm. and of course it's five o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. uh, that I'm, I'm doing this, but that was a very eerie feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, the first touchdown I scored in, in high school, I could not wait to get to the newspaper to see that headline <laughs> because we had beat Chapel Hill, I think it was seven to nothing yeah. or something, and I had caught the touchdown pass, and I got there and opened it, and there it was. Garland Spangler catches touchdown <laughs> pass. Your moment um, of fame ruined by Garland. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, I found out later that his uh, his girlfriend at the time was even going to put it in the school newspaper that way too, but somehow we got that corrected. Well, I'm glad we have it on record today <laughs> <laughs> for posterity, the correct story here on that touchdown pass. Uh, we have some, have some legends. Jack and um, the Night Boys. Gene. Jack and Gene, they carried the newspaper to mm -hmm. town. Mm -hmm. Uh, Buster Davis, uh, Bryant Buster Davis, carried the paper also in part of West Hillsboro. But Buster was a legend in his own time. Mm -hmm. I, I'll never forget uh, one morning coming down the road, and under the single street light there at the corner near the depot where we picked up the newspapers, there was a body lying there under that street light. And I'm walking down there, and I'm walking across the road to the side of it, tiptoeing and suddenly this individual jumps up <laughs> and comes at me and it's Buster Day. Oh. Okay, all right. And sometimes <laughs> we would get up on top of the depot, we'd get there before the guy delivering and of course he was that guy was half asleep and we'd throw pebbles off the top of the depot <laughs> on him and he didn't he didn't know where it was coming from. Um, yeah, he did the same thing one morning when I'm going down and I see the inebriated person staggering from one side of the road to the other and it's coming right up to me. And again, it was Buster. He uh, he had that one. <laughs> uh, Wayne Combs, they called him TB. Uh, Wayne was a, was a carrier at one time and he, a couple things. William Parker went out one Sunday morning, very cold Sunday morning, to get his paper and it wasn't in his driveway. And he looked across Butch's, uh, Butch Rayner had a place over, over across the hill, and he could see TB over there in a, his old barrel that had a fire in it, and he was throwing newspapers in it to keep warm. <laughs> and evidently one of them must have been William Parker's uh, paper. <laughs> I don't know. You mentioned the depot. Do you remember taking the train, train rides from that depot? Yeah, first time I ever went to Durham, I guess. Uh, we didn't we didn't have a car in our immediate family, mm -hmm. so there's some guys around that learn how to tinker and all that stuff. Uh, not me. Uh -uh. Um, so if we went to Durham, we took the train, and uh, n never forget eating the turkey dinner at Woolworths uh, in Durham. That was something that was a, a highlight of the trip. 
Um, but I uh, always wanted my grandkids to have that opportunity to ride the train. And we went to Washington, D.C. this past summer uh, and uh, took the train. And they had a great time. You were recalling memories around the train in World War II um, and the soldiers coming and going and the tanks and everything. Did you have any family members that were in World War II? Yeah, I mentioned my half-brother Thomas. Mm -hmm. Something that was interesting there, uh, a couple of things. Uh, one is that uh, he made a recording while he was in service and sent it. And I can remember this old Victrola that we had playing his message to Mama and Mama crying mm -hmm. uh, because he was, you know, and... And I don't know if that was a common thing or not. I, to me, that was a very unusual. And looking back, I've never heard, ever heard of anyone else uh, uh, talking about that. Mm. Um, we lived, lived next door to uh, a Riley family, um, uh, Miss, Miss Sadie Riley. And she had four sons in service at the same time. Mm. And I'll never forget Mom telling the story about Miss Sadie coming in. Her, She saw Miss Sadie come by the window of the house and came in and she couldn't talk she was uh, so uh, over overcoming mom just knew that something must have happened to one of those boys and then it dawned on her that the lady was choking and mom oh. this is before the Heinlich now okay <laughs> and so what mom did hit her as hard in the back as she could and this big biscuit came flying wow. out of her out of her mouth, and so actually all four boys made it through the through the service. But I and the mama that. too. And the mama too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, you have mentioned several businesses in West Hillsboro. Do you remember the Coca Cola plant? You know, I don't remember the Coca Cola plant. I guess my uh, what I remember is of course Betty Riley's store mm -hmm. uh, that's an old apartment building or someone lives there in the house now but I can remember those guys playing checkers there and anything that you want if mom wanted sugar or flour mm -hmm. she'd send me to Betty Riley's store now this is a store on um, West Hillsboro Avenue right right there at the corner uh, if you um, follow um, West Hillsboro and then gee I wish I could get these these streets right now uh, I lived, okay, Was that well, I lived Street? on Ruffin, Ruffin. Mm -hmm. and uh, the next, then the Eno Methodist Church was there in the front, and then you go down to, um, I guess West Hillsborough Avenue comes down, that's Eno, Eno Street is in the road of, that comes, it mm -hmm. comes in front of the church there, right. yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, they had the big window there on the front, and the guys played checkers there during the winter, mm -hmm. in the summer, they moved out to the back porch. Uh, I have I have this recollection of uh, going on that porch and Dad's playing checkers. I think it was John Midget he was playing checkers with, and I got my finger stuck in a hole on a pole there at the corner. And I'm this is really bad. I guess I'm eight, nine, ten years old. Uh, and see, they're playing checkers. They don't know the agony that I'm going through. I'm picturing what would happen. Would they have to cut this pole down? If they do, the whole corner of this roof is going to come down <laughs> on my head. What's going to happen? And then the 3 o'clock whistle blew, and the guys came in drink, drinking their Cokes and watching the game, and no one's knowing what I'm going through here. So finally, it, uh, my finger slipped out of, mm -hmm. the, of the hole, and, uh, and no one ever knew the agony and the, the, the terrible situation. You had to be a tough guy in those days, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, we, it was a bunch of us guys. Uh, Jackie Feltman was a preacher's kid there at Eno Church, Jackie and Don. Uh, preacher's kids, for some reason, always tried to prove that they really weren't preacher's kids. <laughs> um, and um, we had a little clubhouse, and we decided one day to go over. The, uh, some guys on the old hill had, were building a log cabin down near the river, down near the Eno. And we were going to go over. We decided to go over and dismantle that thing. And we went. We went over 